In this example, we're asked to consider the function y equals 5 minus 2x, then use our graphing calculator to complete the table. We can do that on our graphing calculator by pressing the y equals button, and then we want to enter the function 5 minus 2, and then the x is here on the second row. To access our table, we're going to press the second button and then the table, but I first want to make sure that my table is set up properly. So I'm going to press second and then table set. And that's going to show me <clears throat> the starting value for the table is zero. My table is incrementing by one and my independent and dependent variable, that's the input and output, are automatic. This is what I want. So I'm going to access table by pressing second table, and then I'm going to read the outputs for the inputs that I need from my table over here. So my zero input is an output of five. So I'm going to write that in the space over here. My input of 3 is an output of negative 1, so that goes here. My input of 7, well, I don't have a 7, so I'm going to need to use the arrow keys to head down my list. There's a 7, so that's going to give me negative 9. Keep going down a couple of more. 9 gives me negative 13. And if I go all the way down to 12, I get negative 19. So that's how we use our table to generate essentially sets of ordered pairs that we could use to graph by hand. But in this case, we're going to use our graphing calculator. So I'd like to do that first by using the standard viewing window. And to get there, I'm going to press the zoom button and then 6. And that is going to give me a graph that's on a window of negative 10 to 10 for x, negative 10 to 10 for y. So if we're going to draw what we see on the calculator screen, then I'm going to draw my vertical axis. And then I'm going to go ahead and label these as x, y, just so I can show that I understand which one is which. And then I'm going to draw exactly what I see as closely as I can on my calculator. I'm going to replicate that here. So that's close enough. That's a rough sketch. All right. Let's see in part C, use your graphing calculator to sketch the graph and use a different viewing window. So if I want to change the window, I'm going to need to go over to the calculator and press the window button. And then if I want to change x min to 0, I'm going to type, type 0 there. Then x max is 3. So I'm using my arrow keys to go down to the different parts. Let's see, y min is 0 and y max is 5. The other items, the scale and the other items here, I just leave those as they are. Okay. So I have a new window, which means that I'm probably going to see something just like this little corner of the graph. So let's press graph and see what we get. And indeed, that's about what we see. So I'm going to indicate here that my x and y axis are the horizontal and vertical in my, my kind of box that's drawn here. And then I'm just going to connect my graph points like that. And that's pretty representative of what we see in the calculator window. And that's a pretty good rough graph. 